So just a little bit of a mess, but if we push this little button here, and then we go here, and that turns on, and it's getting juice from those, which gets juice from that, which gets juice from those, which gets juice from that, which puts juice into here, which puts juice into this. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so this video is going to be going over the solar system on my little camping trailer here. Converted cargo trailer. It's a nice wheels cargo. So, the solar system begins with these two HQST 100 watt mono panels. These were purchased in uh, two, uh, 2020 and they're also, I believe, manufactured in 2020. I'll put a link to the description in these uh, for these below where you can find them. Really happy with them. Uh, they're you know, 100 watt monolithic. Sizing is really nice. So it's just 200 watts of solar. And we're gonna be doing just a little bit of looking at, at some stuff today as far as what these guys are putting out. Anyhow, just run with uh, eight gauge wire. Pretty basic at some point in time. Plan to cover these guys up. Uh, I'll put a link. These are pure copper. Uh, sheathing is 0.99% uh, oxygen free, double layer. These guys should be really good at uh, UV resistance and long-term reliability, good heavy copper wire. Now, they go through my roof through this, I don't know what you'd want to call this, gland bung holder, whatever thing. I'll put a link for this down there too really nice little part and it's actually pretty inexpensive only about 10 bucks on the amazon and then there's three screws in that and then this silicone or not silicone but this schmoo stuff here this is actually you know it's a product just like this self-leveling sealant specifically for rvs put a link down below what for that so it runs about eight or nine dollars a tube and it's really something to go with a quick note on that when you install this Make sure to wipe your area down with something like acetone, cleaner, whatever. Anyhow, make sure you clean your area real good so this stuff can stick, especially if you've got an older RV or an older roof surface. There's going to be an oxidized surface, whether it's fiberglass, aluminum, or even wood or whatever the heck you got going on there. You want to clean that oxidized surface off, even if it's maybe a 3M scrubby pad, what for getting the good sealant with this stuff. The one thing about your roofs on a trailer, that's the number number one thing to look at so you don't get no rot and uh, stuff like that. So you can actually see, really nice touch. I got a shout out to Wells Cargo here. The guy that assembled this actually took the time to, oop, got you out of focus. They actually took the time to bring that schmoo over here where this joint is. So shout out to the guy that assembled this trailer down there at Wells Cargo. So let's go inside and check out the rest. Also, a real quick note, wherever you assemble your panels to your roof, wherever you fasten them, you see my mark here, that's right where there's a roof strut going across. In this, it's one inch wide by two or an uh, inch and a half deep square tubing. And so we want to make sure to get our fastening screw in the center of that. Uh, another thing, to mention is that self-leveling sealant we just covered. Before I put the panel down, I mark where my screw locations are going to be. I pre-drill them and bring my panel off and then put some of the schmoo, the self-leveling sealant, under where this bracket will go. Then I put my panel back down with the brackets assembled. So the bracket will already be uh, mounted to the panel. Put that bugger down. So that puts a layer of the schmoo, the self-leveling sealant between the bracket and the camper. And then put in our fastener. In this case, it's a self-tap and sheet metal screw. And then once that's all fastened down, we go ahead and we put more schmoo, the self-leveling sealant, 
over each of the brackets. And then you got your brackets here in the middle, crossover wires tying the panels together. Oh, on that note, I'll put a link to the Y connectors or branch connectors for this panel system. They're all pretty uh, generic, but I'll go ahead and link that down there. So as you can see, each and every uh, mountain location is weather sealed and we won't have any problems with corrosion. And if you needed to move the, remove the panels or change them up, replace them, no worries. This stuff is easy enough. It's a, it's a non-hardening self-leveling sealant, as you can see. This is put on there about two months ago. And so you won't have any problem if you need to get to that fastener in the future to uh, do maintenance. All right, so we're gonna hop inside the camper and we'll have a look at our solar system and we'll take a look at the different uh, different products that we use in this camper. So, here's where our power system is mostly. We've got our inverter, our charge controller, our 120 breaker box, and we have our uh, shore power. Well, okay, so down here, we've got our a uh, transfer switch, we've got our shore power, uh, 12 volt charger slash uh, power supply, uh, inverter, charge controller, 120 box, and then we have, just real quick, our power is going out from our uh, 12 volt supply, our batteries, going out, and that is actually behind here, all the wiring's behind this, so you just, you could remove this and access all the 12 volt and AC wiring, and that goes through over here in this utility cabinet, See if we got get our light in here on. And so you can see that comes through here, comes through the wall from back behind there, and then runs over here to our 12 volt distribution panel. So we've got, uh, what is it, uh, eight, eight, six gauge, was it six gauge, eight gauge, uh, pure copper coming in, lugged out to our distribution panel. There you go there. This panel, if you're to break a fuse, it has a little light that comes on. Oh, okay. You just have to take my word for it. They do come on if you blow a fuse. See if we can get that to happen for you. Okay, so there you go. If you were to blow a fuse, that little light would come on. Really like these distribution blocks. I've used a couple now in different projects. I'll put a link below. Uh, so, Never mind all this, this is a mess. We'll get this all tidied up sooner or later. We're still kind of working on some of this stuff, adding, adding different products. So anyhow, that's our 12 volt distribution uh, panel. Now, the 12 volts comes from uh, two 100 amps uh, sealed lead acid batteries or gel batteries. And that is under the bed here. So real quick, try and do this one handed. Got to dig around. Sorry about it. And the lighting might not be the best, but you might have to take my word for it. Here's our batteries here. I'm just gonna put a picture right here so that you can see. Right, so anyhow, the power comes from the batteries. Now it lugs out two different ways. I've got power coming in directly from the batteries that goes through a 250 amp fuse to the inverter. And then there's, we've got wires going to the battery that are coming from the power supply. Now over here lugged out, we've got the battery directly hooked up to the 120 charger. So when you're plugged into shore power, this thing will charge your batteries. It also will supply 12 volts of power so if your batteries were dead or not there, as long as you're plugged into 120 shore power, <clears throat> you'll have a 12 volt power system. And so this goes to the fuse block, the 12 volt distribution block that we just looked at over in the utility cabinet. Now 120 volts comes in down below here. I'll step outside and show you that. So you just plug in the shore power here nice little weatherproof uh, unit. I'll put a link down below for that as well. So you get your shore power plugged in 
And then that's all wired into our transfer switch. Now, here's a look at our transfer switch. We've got shore power coming in, and then we've got inverter power coming in, and then we've got main power out. So this little guy's got a little smart computer bugger in here, and when it senses power coming in from shore power, now depending on how you wire this, it's dominant one way or the other. If you've got power coming in from shore power, it's going to choose that over the inverter, and, and likewise, you can have it wired so that you can have it choose inverter power over shore power, but anyhow, we've got it wired up so that it's directly off of our incoming inverter power, and if we were to plug this in right now to shore power, it would swap over from shore power to, uh, or from inverter power to shore power. Now a quick note on this one, it's a pretty good unit, but if you're running uh, electronics off of it, it does have about 0.8 milliseconds of transfer time, something like that. So it might not be quick enough if you're running sensitive electronics or whatever. You might not have to worry about all that stuff, but if you're interested in that, you might, you might want to look into how quickly these things swap over between your phase. Anyhow, that's into the weeds, let's move on. So, this is wired directly into that, and this goes actually into shore power, so it's wired into the shore power circuit. It only gets power from shore power. This will not get power from the inverter. That would, I don't know if it'd blow things up, but it would definitely cancel out uh, the idea of things, anyhow. Now, on our inverter, we're using a Renogy 2000 watt inverter. I have two different friends that have used this in their big class A motor coaches and they're very happy with them. One of them's had them had it going for a couple of years now. I don't know if they've changed over the couple of years, but this one was purchased in 2020. These guys are pain in the living to get the the shipping. It it took them took them a couple of weeks to finally get it shipped to me, but uh, it's kind of, it's almost worth it. Uh, as far as the quality of the unit. It seems to be a pretty darn nice unit. Really happy with it. Really happy with the power that comes out of it. And I can actually run my 18-amp uh, table saw off this sucker pretty pretty well. I haven't made it trip. So now the power comes out of this unit and goes down our transfer switch. And then it goes from our transfer switch down there. You see here in this this shielded cable here, comes up to our AC distribution box. Now, it goes from the AC distribution box and it goes off to a couple of different circuits. I just have two circuits, and one goes to the utility and kitchen area, and then I've got another one that goes down under the bed towards the firewall for if anyone wanted something over there in the future, like a TV or something like that. So now with this Renergy uh, inverter system, one of the things that it comes with, I think it, uh, the price is about 300 bucks. Again, that link for this system will be uh, right below. But it comes with a remote unit, and all that remote unit is, you see this cable here, that runs through our system, back to our little power wall, or whatever you want to call this, and that's a little remote switch. Now I think that you can get something that's a little bit more fancy than this, with the uh, a readout and all that, but this is what comes with the unit. Pretty nice. And if I throw this switch, you'll hear, I'll just go over here. You'll hear that click. And so our transfer switch has sensed that that bugger no longer is putting out power and it's transferred over. So now if I remotely turn the switch on, you'll see the inverter fire up. So super happy with that. I like the fact that I can turn this thing off when I leave for whatever reason so it doesn't drain power or, you know, the pixies don't get out and burn the place down. Definitely like that. Again, that's supplied by two four-gauge cables on um, the battery chargers going off over there for the Makita batteries. So we've got supplied uh, double four-gauge wires that run directly to the battery. These run through a 250 amp fuse. Now, 
some of the things I've found online says that this 2000 watt inverter should have a 300 amp fuse. But my dad actually got one of these for his little RV and he managed to, sorry to throw you under the bus dad, but yet he actually did not mean to do it of course, but he, he momentarily hooked these up to the wrong polarity on the battery. It, uh, you know, how cooked it wouldn't work, fried it, whatever. So he took it apart and he found that the internal fuses were blown. Now the internal fuses in this thing, they're a bunch of blade type fuses that are soldered into the board. There was two rows of 20. So there's 10 or two. Anyhow, they're the way they add up. I'll put a picture here, actually, if I can find it. And the way they add up, it was like 250 watts. So I don't, it doesn't make sense to me to have a fuse that's smaller or that's bigger than the internal fuse of the unit in between this and the battery because it is a real big pain in the butt to have to re-solder those blade fuses in here. Just have a look at the picture and you'll understand. So moving on, on that little side note, make sure that when you do systems like this, you are absolutely certain about fusing breakers and all that jazz. Also, make sure that you really get your grounds figured out and, and all that stuff. I'm actually going to say, go check out this guy. I'll put a link for his videos somewhere over here. But Will Pros, I've been poking around for years on the internet with solar power stuff. I've been goofing around with it for quite some time. And his videos are just, they're fantastic. They, they cover a lot of broad issues and topics when it comes to solar panel. And the coolest thing is, is that he's comparing products. He doesn't care what the people that make the products think about what he says. And we really get to see the different, uh, um, the differences in those products. That being said, let's move on to my charge controller. Now I've used a couple of different charge controllers in the past. They're always cheap ones, but this is, as far as for this project, I really wanted to go with a quality MPPT solar charge controller. If you want to know what the difference in charge controllers is, go ahead and check out that fellow's videos. I'll put a video to that right here because it's, it's something I think you really need to uh, pay attention to if you're going with a big charge uh, control system, a big solar system. Now, this is big enough that I could put another two panels, 100 watt panels on there, and I think it would it would be a nice system. Right now it's only 200 watts, but I think we could go up to 400 with this system. Again, I re refer you to that guy's videos. His video on these charge controllers is what led me to buy this particular one. Renogy makes one very similar. There's a couple of things that really make a difference though. That's specifically where the lugs bolt in. This one is much heavier. So really happy with this. It's about 80, 89 bucks on the Amazon or some other sites like eBay. I'll put a link down below. Can't say enough about this thing. I've been operating it for about two months now and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, of course, the power's coming in this right here, this is just so I have some extra wire because there's some more stuff going in. I might need to move stuff around in the future. Comes in through the roof from that gland outlet that we seen earlier. Comes in to our, our charge controller and then our power out to our battery. Goes right through our wall here and down to our batteries that you seen earlier. Now I do have one outlet hooked up to the load. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary to use this. There's a lot of people that say a different thing about using that load outlet on your, your charge controller, but this was closer than having to run wires all the way back to my uh, fuse block for where these wires go to. And that's right over the bed for the light. Now this charge controller, it does have a, uh, not a USB, but I forget what you call that intelligence hookup here. And um, you can get a panel for this thing that's a remote. So anyhow, you can get that remote uh, control board and I'll, maybe I'll put a picture of it right here so you can see what that looks like. So that's kind of 
what I got going on for components on the solar system. Uh, I was going to do some different testing uh, as far as loads and what we have going on in uh, in the cloudy weather we, we well we had going on when I started the video but now we've got some broken clouds and broken direct sun, uh, sunlight. So I've got a little bit of data out of this thing with the clouds out and we were getting around 50 to 80 watts of power but the batteries are full now as you can see we've got a little data link or not data link but we got some information in here so the batteries are close to full so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a load on them and we're going to see what kind of information we get out here with the, the solar panels charging the batteries. Um, we might run through though, so... So on the controller for this solar charge controller, you get a fair amount of information. Let's you know when there's a load being pulled. Now that's just here, and it's not really much of anything. It's like it shows up as 0.4 watts or something like that, or amps. And it shows that our battery's at 13.1 volts. It's about fully charged. We don't have much load being pulled on it right now, just some DC lights and a battery charger. And let's see what else we got. We can go through, and if you hold this button down, you can go through and choose the different... Uh, battery options. There's uh, sealed lead acid, flooded lead acid, lithium, some other options. And also, uh, let's see, this button here, you hold this guy down and you can cycle between a 12 or a 24 volt system. Of course, go through your, you know, if you're going to get this, you can go on a Rich Solar's website and you can get the data for this and, and all the different, before you buy it, you can see what options you can do. I don't recall if you can customize charging settings on this. I think you can. You might check out uh, that Will Pro guy. He might might be able to tell you in that video. Also, you might just go to their website and find out. Some of the other features on this thing is that you can see what your charging voltage is from your panels. And uh, that's floating around 16 to 17. It's also in... Um, in MPPT mode, so I don't know. It's probably just trickle charging the batteries right now. And then there's a couple of different modes that show up right there. And hello. One of them is the MPPT. Then there's um, float, the trickle, and some other stuff anyhow. We can cycle through it, and we see we've got voltage from the panels, current amperage coming from the panels. Now, I want to say it's producing more than this, but that's all it's letting go into the batteries. Uh, I might be wrong there. We'll find out. And shows our battery percentage. And if I turned off the inverter, it would probably go way up. So I'll just turn the inverter off. Yeah, it comes up. Now I'll turn off all the DC load. All right, so then we come up as all the most of the drain comes off. Anyhow, I think uh, we'll 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 drain this battery a bit and see what we can do. All right, so it might be a little loud, but I got a table saw running out there. Of course, no load. I've got all the lights on, and I have the diesel heater running. If you can see that, a little loud, but anyhow, what we got going on is so if we look at our main system we show that our battery voltage has dropped from 13.1 uh, down to 12.4 so there's a load being pulled and obviously we can see that it's charging the battery now if we cycle through we see we've got 16.1 volts coming from the uh, panels we're getting about 10 amps right now it was up about 11 and we're looking at uh, about 60% battery charge. Of course, if we shut everything off, that would probably go right back up to 100, close to 100%. Now this isn't perfect, I think, without having a proper gauge for the battery, but I think this is close for reference. So battery voltage, that's our little load, 0.4 amps is what it's pulling. And let's go ahead and go back to what the panels are actually pulling. 
So we're at 16.1 and about uh, 10 amps. And if we watch this, it, it fluctuates. But so let's just do a little math there. So that's about 162 watts. Earlier we were getting, when I turned everything on, uh, there's a, on the diesel heater, there's a little, uh, there's a little glow plug. When that thing was going, we were pulling about 12 amps out of the panels. So, and that was at 16.5 volts. So at that time it was, uh, what was that, 11? So we were pulling about a 181 amps out of there. So I might, what I'll do, I might put a little bit more of a load on this and then I'm going to go upstairs and clean those panels off and we'll see what we get. Okay, so I went up and cleaned the panels off, but it really didn't change things that much. But I think if we put a bit more of a load on this, we'll start to see something. Okay, so now we're starting to fight with the clouds out there and it's coming back and forth. But what we've seen, best we'd seen earlier with the direct sun was about 11 point, what was it? It was 11 point something amps in at 17 point or 17.1 volts, which was about 198. So, so just from this rough messing around, we've got pretty good power coming out of those panels and direct sunlight. So again, they're 100 watt panels, and so we should get 200 watts of power. And we got, I mean, according to this hobo math, we're getting pretty close to that in direct sunlight. So, anyhow. We're going to shut everything off and let everything kind of chooch as it should and get these batteries up back up to voltage. According to this, we're at 87%. And if I shut off all load, it might go back up to 90. So we'll see what happens there. Anyhow, um, I hope you liked the video. Kind of just went over some stuff here as far as this thing goes. If you're interested in any parts of this, uh, whether the trans... Uh, whether it's that 30 amp transfer switch, my 35 amp shore power charger slash 12 volt uh, supply, the Renogy 2000 watt inverter, the Rich Solar 20 amp uh, charge controller, or even this box. Go ahead and comment below. If you want to see something specific, let me know. Check out the blog site, gonorthoffgrid.com for more information. I'll put a link to all this stuff down below. Uh, a couple things to note is that you don't have to go with a, a residential commercial style breaker box like this and one of them fuse blocks like I shown earlier. You can get an all-in-one unit just like you'd find in an RV. Maybe I can put a link for that in here. So anyhow, a couple things to note. Always use pure copper wiring even for your 12 volt side. I don't like that aluminum copper clad aluminum crap. Uh, I wish I'd had a little bit nicer wiring than this, but it's not too bad. Keep everything neat and orderly. Be sure to label stuff also, especially on your 12 volt wiring. So, questions, comments, go ahead and comment below, ask questions, hop over there to the blog site and post stuff there what for answering and interacting with this stuff. So, hope you enjoyed, maybe got some questions answered to you and exposed you some some other uh, YouTube people that can answer questions and show you information on some of these products. Anyhow, take care, get out there, do stuff, go build stuff, have fun. Bye-bye.